Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here, and today we're gonna talk about how to make PixInsight faster. So, <laughs> that has been kind of a fixation for me uh, recently, how to use uh, PixInsight in a faster and better way. So, we've looked at uh, Dark Arkans Easy Processing Suite, which is getting better by the day. Now it has a live stack uh, functionality that ri rival or is even better than uh, Deep Sky Stackers. So things are really, you know, getting great for, for PixInsight on that front. We then, uh, we also looked prior to that into how to make StarNet++, which is very useful to make masks, star masks, and is used by Dark's Easy Processing Suite um, to, uh, to use the GPU of the computer if you have an NVIDIA GPU, and we got huge performance enhancements out of that. And then we looked at a different like automatic processing suite um, called uh, AutoPix or Pix AutoScript um, that, you know, I found was actually pretty decent. Um, so a lot of stuff that we looked at. Um, if I'm not too lazy, I'll be uh, make sure that while I was talking a moment ago, I will have put like li links above to those videos. So now it's still raining. It's been, and I'm not exaggerating, it's been raining for months now in Tokyo. I, I don't even know how long it's been since I've seen like a starry sky. The rainy season this year seems like it's never ending. So I'm a sad geek. So sad geeks have to find a way to occupy themselves. And so what I did is I looked, you know, at tips and tricks to make um, PixInsight faster. So there are tons of little tips and tricks to make PixInsight faster. And there is one main thing that lets you measure how fast PixInsight is on your computer, which is the PixInsight benchmark. However, and this is a bit of a spoiler alert, I found that the PixInsight benchmark puts far too much weight on uh, swap speed and I get like much, you know, better benchmark results. Whereas like if I look at the actual real time usage of, of PixInsight, I don't get any performance enhancements. There's tons of situations like that and we'll look at, uh, at those. Um, now I'm not an, a benchmark, benchmark expert and um, I've also, focused for my performance enhancements, not on pre-processing, but on processing of the final image. The reason being that pre-processing, it's something that, especially with weighted batch pre-processing, I can launch and just do something else somewhere else. Whereas when I'm actually doing post-processing, I'll be wading through each of the processes to run, and then I might actually revert back and try with new parameters. So there's a lot of sitting around and waiting for processes to, to finish, to complete, at least in my way of using PixInsight. So that's why I'll be focusing on post-processing speed. Now in, in PixInsight, if you go, and if you look at my screen and you go into script, benchmarks, there is here the PixInsight benchmark that is available and that you can, you know, just uh, click on run, run benchmark and it will just run a benchmark of uh, PixInsight. And then for my computer, uh, without using any like AC adapter, which is not good practice for a laptop computer to use high performance, especially for something like that, that's a gaming computer. But regardless of that, once it's done, we'll get a result. And we can see the benchmark is done. We get a nice galaxy picture with the benchmark results. And my benchmark result is actually pretty low at 3,331. Uh, you can see that my swap speed in particular was very slow, um, which yeah, I've noticed that my, my disc in this particular PC is not awesome to say the least. Uh, so that, which means by the way, that when I do next some uh, solar or planetary imaging, I'll probably connect a USB 3 uh, faster uh, drive, maybe NVMe. Um, not sure exactly why that is, or actually I might uh, just add a second NVMe drive in my computer to make it run faster. I'll see what I'll do, but you know, we can see that swap speed has an impact. Now, swap speed is actually something that has a very large weight in this ben benchmark. 
which does not especially reflect like real life scenarios, as we'll see in a moment. So I'll just exit the benchmark and we can look at some of the settings that we want to look at. So under edit and global preferences, we have this little window here and we love little windows and under parallel processings and threads, you want to make sure that the default settings are still on. In particular, you want to allow using all available uh, processors, enable parallel processing, enable thread CPU affinity, and having this as time critical. But th these are the default settings. Another thing that is often mentioned is under directories and network, to add more directories, actually the number of um, drives or folders that you want to point to will depend more on the actual SSD RAM, uh, SSD drive or hard drive or NVMe drive that you are using apparently. So it gets a bit like woozy and that kind of stuff, but you can actually enhance your benchmark numbers using that. So you'd go in and you'd say like add a drive and then you know you select the folder and you say okay and I've noticed that it makes no difference, at least on Windows, whether I am using multiple times the same folder or um, you know different folders uh, in there, multiple different folders. So it's kind of uh, kind of weird. Now let's look at the actual results, which I ran on my desktop PC, the one that I typically used uh, used for processing. So. First thing I did is I ran the benchmark three times in Pix Insight uh, in th in, with different uh, parameters. And in particular, I used one folder. So in that list of folders that you saw, I had a single folder. Then I had eight times the same folder uh, because that seemed to me to uh, speed up the benchmark the most, uh, eight times. And then eight different folders. Um, and then we looked at the benchmark scores. I took the average. And we see that, yes, okay, when you have multiple folders or even multiple times the same folder, you get noticeably better scores in the benchmark. Very good. So um, then I thought of like, okay, but what is what happens when I actually do practical processing? And especially like stuff that I do a lot, like denoising, deconvolution using Dark's um, easy processing suite, or like combination using the auto script that I um, presented in a, pre in a previous video. And I was thinking auto script in particular creates a lot of masks, a lot of like new, new images. Um, so it would use the, the swap a lot more. So I was expecting to see a large enhancement. So on here I have the results. On each we have one folder, uh, eight times the same folder and then eight different folders. So we see easy decon, this is in seconds, took basically all the time, 33.5 se 33 seconds to process. So there is no difference whatsoever for easy deconvolution. Easy denoise, same thing. We get pretty much the same result, uh, regardless of you know wh whether I have one folder, eight times the same folder or eight different folders. Um, so. I wasn't like super convinced that uh, we had like, you know, anything going on. Like why does the benchmark actually take, um, you know, swap speed into account so much is kind of a mystery to me. It might have been more relevant when we had hard disks um, and, and the, the like really slow write speeds could actually hamper PixInsight much more than it does today. And uh, then into the auto script, uh, there is one interesting thing that I saw is that one folder reliably like took four seconds longer than multiple uh, folders for some reason. So there was a bit of enhancement in having multiple folders for auto scripts, which kind of reflects the fact that indeed auto scripts creates a lot of new images, transition, like intermediate images that has to be, have to be stored in swap. Okay. So that's, uh, that's what I did. And each of those tests, by the way, um, so smaller, shorter is better, shorter bar is better. And it's an average of three runs of each of those processes on, of course, the same image or the same set of images. So when I was looking at that, I'm like, okay, it does not hurt to have multiple folders in there. So feel free to go ahead. That's kind of like free gain, but it's not measurably better, measurably better except maybe for auto script. 
Fine, okay, so that's, you know, that's very good to see though that we can add multiple folders in there and we might get some performance enhancement even though it's like fairly small, um, you know, in, in Pix Insight, why not? Free gain, I'll take it. So feel free to experiment, adding more folders, removing folders until you find like that magic number of folders in there that will make Pix Insight like and start with the benchmark run faster a little bit, a tiny bit, depending on what you're doing. So yeah, marginal, marginal improvement. So then I looked into something else, which is something called a RAM disk. So my main desktop computer has 32 gigs of RAM. RAM is random access memory. It is volatile memory, meaning when it loses power, all of the content of that memory is gone and it is super fast access, right? So. Um, there is a technique both in Windows and in other OSs to uh, take a bit of that memory and make it available as a hard disk to your operating system. And because that memory is so fast, the logic would be that if in PixInsight you point it to that RAM disk, so to basically to a fake hard disk that just reserves an amount of RAM, then you'd get much faster results. So I decided to try that. I used a free app. I'll put a link down below uh, that's very easy to use to actually create a RAM disk. And then I ran the PixInsight uh, benchmark again. And uh, we can see like this time as a baseline, I used eight times the same folder in the RAM disk. Uh, the reason being that because the RAM, RAM disk that's, that gets fully deleted every time you restart the computer or you lose power, um, I don't want to have to recreate like eight folders each time and then point them from PixInsight, especially since from my pre previous tests, I didn't see a lot of improvement at having different folders versus having the same folder multiple times. So I have RAM disk eight times the same folder. And indeed in the PixInsight benchmark, we can see a very, you know, definite enhancement in terms of the total, total score. We gained almost 300 points. That's not nothing. So when I look at the benchmark, I'm like, hmm, this is nice. But then benchmark is not equal to reality, at least for post-processing. So with that in mind, let's run easy decon, easy denoise, and the auto script for narrowband combination uh, and see if we get a real world performance enhancements. And we don't. <laughs> So that was a bit disappointing. Um, and we can see that easy decon, same thing. Easy denoise, same thing. Auto script, same thing. So that RAM disk under Windows seems to have been, at least in real life, completely useless. Okay. And you know, when you use a RAM disk, you're actually sacrificing RAM and I don't like doing so. So, okay, maybe it's not such a good idea. Now I will, mention something I did not mention up to now. My computer, um, my desktop computer using uh, uses a Samsung Evo um, NVMe M.2 drive. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry. It means it's a very, very fast drive. NVMe means fast, basically. <laughs> Um, so maybe that's the reason why I don't see any good improvements. Maybe if I have a hard disk instead or a very slow SSD or worse an EMMC type of SSD, which we see in a lot of laptops, then the results might be very different and RAM disk might actually make a lot of sense. So I invite you to uh, check that out. However, if you have an NVMe drive, we can see that RAM disks don't provide a big performance and improvement, but for your PC, it might. So, you know, it's free to actually try it out. So, you know, try it and see if you get any better results. I personally didn't. So the green bar there, the RAM disk did not show any enhancement. Okay, so then what is the next step? Well, the next step that I had heard was Linux. So PixInsight, as far as I understand it, uh, is developed under Linux or something like that. And it's compiled under Linux or something like that. And Linux is an operating system, kind of like Windows, except that it is free and open source. 
Um, and I've been a long time Linux user, even though I haven't used it in a couple of years. Uh, so, you know, I decided let's install Linux on my computer. Now, typically installing Linux on your computer requires partitioning the hard drive, which can be a bit painful, um, especially with things like secure boot or that kind of weird technologies that we see in recent computers. So if you want to actually try and install Linux on your computer, what I did and what I suggest you do is use a tool called Wubi UEFI, huh, that's a mouthful, which lets you install a flavor of Linux called Ubuntu, and the latest version of Ubuntu is 20.04. Okay, and the advantage of this Wubi UEFI is that it's an installer that runs under Windows, <laughs> installs Linux on your Windows hard disk as a file, as just a file, and when you're running Windows, nothing seems to have changed. You can reboot your computer to get under Linux and you can go back under Windows by just rebooting. And if you just uninstall Ubuntu from your Windows um, you know, settings tab, it's as if Ubuntu never existed. It's very easy. There's a very slight performance hit in terms of uh, hard disk access. Uh, so this, uh, but it is like super easy to do and much better. It is very easy to undo as well. So it's great for a test and I'll be leaving a link in the description down below for Wubi access. Okay, so I installed Linux and under Linux, I installed PixInsight. And the first thing I noticed, by the way, is that Linux these days is super sleek. Like really, it's beautiful. I, I hadn't realized how much it has gotten better. Um, I also noticed that it is super fast. Um, and PixInsight especially seemed very responsive. And I think I'm probably showing you images of that right now. And it looks like the usual PixInsight, like nothing has changed. It's exactly the same as in Windows. It's very easy to install, even though you do have to use like the command line, line a little bit, but it is very easy to, uh, to install and very easy to launch and very easy to use. So that was very good. And so then I was under Linux and I ran my tests and first I ran the, the PixInsight benchmark. I used my eight uh, folders under the uh, PixInsight settings, um, you know, to, to have like to be comparing eight apples to apples to the eight folders. And I also used a RAM disk under Linux, uh, which you can create very easily. You don't need a third party program unlike uh, Windows. And then I tried to see what, um, you know, the difference was. Okay, so first things first, Linux on its own with PixInsight seemed to get, in terms of benchmark, the same result more or less as Windows uh, without the RAM, RAM disk. Okay, and then with the RAM disk, suddenly Windows, uh, Linux like shot ahead like a lot. Um, and I was really surprised by that. So even the CPU score was getting better, which makes no sense. Why would having a RAM disk actually make the CPU work faster? Is it because the CPU has to wait less for images to become available? I don't know, but suddenly the benchmark gave a much, much better score than Windows. I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. I can use Linux to do my PixInsight post-processing. Great. Uh, and then, you know, I said, like, okay, wait, wait a second, we're going to use our EZD Calm, EZD Noise, um, and uh, PixInsight AutoScript narrowband combination to see what happens. Now, to be clear, by the way, with the EZD Calm, I use this, I measure the time after the masks and the PSF have been created. So the final deconvolution, not the creation of the masks. This is important. I'll get to that in a moment. Let's see what the results were. And so here we are, here we have the results. And uh, let's see, yellow. Now, now I've like, everything is with eight folders, right? So I'm not long, I'm no longer comparing like one folder to eight and that kind of stuff. And we have Windows, Windows with RAM disk, Linux and Linux with RAM disk. And wow, wow, is it different? lower here is better. This is the time taken for each operation. And there is like almost a 30% improvement in easy decon and easy denoise and in auto script. And you'll, you'll notice that the RAM disk doesn't seem to do anything. 
So under Linux, despite the fact that RAM disk seems to make a huge difference in the benchmark, in real life use, doesn't seem to do anything. And even in the auto script, which seemed under Windows um, to have like benefited by, for, by multiple folders, but not from a RAM disk, we don't see a big difference. So conclusion there, well, Linux is just better. <laughs> Linux actually runs PixInsight faster. How amazing is that? This is awesome. And Linux is free. With Wubi UEFI, it's easy to install, it's easy to reboot to, and it's completely isolated from your Windows system. So it's like kind of like a sandbox kind of OS. You don't need to install anything else, then PixInsight, and you just run it. Plus, the AutoScript scripts work, the uh, Dark Archon Easy scripts work, Starnet++ also works. Now, where is the problem? The problem lies in whether you have an NVIDIA graphics card or NVIDIA GPU. Because, as I showed in, one of, in the previous uh, video about how to accelerate Starnet++, if you have an NVIDIA graph, the cards are you've seen how under Windows to make Starnet++ faster by making it use your graphics card rather than do your CPU and you get very like huge gains in speed. Now there is good news. I was able to do the same thing under Linux. It was not easy for me to find out. I had to I found like a great Japanese page in Japanese explaining like how to uh, install the, re the relevant stuff, not for Starnet++, but for like machine learning in general. And following that, I finally got Starnet++ to run on the GPU using the standalone Starnet++ program. I was like, awesome. So with that, I had the final piece. And so I, I went and I applied exactly the same methodology to the PixInsight Starnet++ plugin, right? Um, and it didn't work. Well, it works. The uh, GPU acceleration is available, but the Linux PixInsight plugin does not use it. And I have no idea why. It keeps using the CPU. I did exactly the same thing. I gave the same libraries to the uh, PixInsight uh, plugin as I did to the uh, to the actual like standalone Starnet++ program. The standalone uses the GPU. The PixInsight pl plugin doesn't. Why is it important? It's important because uh, Dark Arkans Easy Processing Suite are now it's sometimes called Easy Peasy for pro processing suite. <laughs> Uh, actually uses Starnet++ to create masks. And not being able to use the GPU for those masks actually makes me lose processing time. Now in the grand scheme of thing, is it that significant? Honestly, I don't know. Um, but with that, I'm like kind of like, should I, you know, go through the trouble of rebooting my computer to get under Linux, to get faster, processing in PixInsight except for Starnet++ mask creation. And I don't know, so I'll have to test it out. But, you know, that is the only drawback that I have found. I think I could probably solve that Starnet++ uh, plugin issue by recompiling the PixInsight plugin from scratch. But honestly, I don't want to even research it. It's too much work. I had so much to do to uh, to first like make the GPU support work. Uh, so yeah, I'm like, hmm, this is really too bad. So if anyone of you guys uses Linux and wants to try it out, please feel free to do so. There's another drawback with Linux is that I believe, or I have read that this uh, GPU acceleration for Starnet++ will only work with computers that have discrete graphics uh, GPUs. So our discrete graphics cards. So basically desktop computers. If you have uh, a laptop with a discrete graphics card, NVIDIA, but you have what is called the Optimus technology, which basically all laptops, well, most laptops do when they have an NVIDIA graphics card, it will not work well under Linux at all. So you're losing the acceleration of Starnet++ if you have an NVIDIA card. Okay, and so that 
has been like the end of my, you know, analysis for making Pix Insight faster. So the conclusion is, if you do not have, um, a, well, you want to use multiple folders under the temporary folders in Pix Insight. It gives you at least a benchmark number boost, which is always ego boosting, so why not? It feels good, like, mm, look at my beautiful benchmark number, <laughs> kind of thing. Okay, why not? That's good. Um, although in real life, it didn't seem to make such a big difference. Um, but if you're really after speed and you do not have an NVIDIA graphics card or you do not use Starnet++, I really think you should try installing Linux on your computer. As I mentioned, it's very easy and it's very easy to undo the installation, which is even more important using this Ruby um, UEFI, UEFI, whatever um, method. So I really uh, suggest you try that because it's really impressive how fast, you know, it becomes under Linux for whatever reason. So give it a go if you want to, uh, to do so, uh, because, you know, that has been the thing to me that made PixInsight faster. So that was the too long, didn't read kind of thing. Sorry, you had to wait for the conclusion to actually see into this. I wanted to kind of explain my methodology, but you know, if you have any feedback, if you have any comments, if my methodology was flawed, or if you have any suggestions about what else to measure, please let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video was useful, please go here and click on the like button. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please feel free to subscribe because there's tons of different types of content on this pro on this channel are all related to astrophotography or sometimes astronomy. Uh, I have technical videos like this one. I have technical videos about cameras, sensors, read noise, offsets, uh, yeah, uh, optimal <laughs> exposure time. Um, I have gear reviews. I have uh, practical tips. I have all sorts of content on the channel. If that sounds like something that should be interesting to you, feel free to go in and click the subscribe button and click that notification bell next to it so that you're notified when, when I get a new uh, video coming up. But with that, you know, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope it has been useful. Uh, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.